Hey, what's going on there, folks? Uh, good afternoon. The Earthmaster here on the live stream with an uh, update video on this uh, first day of the weekend. It is Saturday, December 11th, 2021, about 11.53 a.m. California time. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe showing some activity up here in the Alaska region, right around the Gulf of Alaska. Seen some uptick in earthquake activity in that region overnight. Also some activity down in the South America region where it's been awfully quiet over the past three days or so. Starting to see a little bit of change of movement down there in the South America, Peru, uh, Chile Trench region. Also some activity here in the South Sandwich Islands once again, kicking up um, and some deep earthquake activity at that continues down into the trench area of the uh, South Sandwich Islands. Looking at that 5.1 that struck overnight, 102 kilometers uh, depth for that earthquake. This area has seen a wide swath of deep movement down here over the last, uh, let's go ahead and pop this up, over the last couple days or so. <clears throat> most of these earthquakes way down there, down dip, creating that uh, subduction zone earthquake activity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Had a couple uh, 100 kilometer deep earthquakes. Uh, when was that? About, uh, looks like yesterday, but beyond the 24-hour period. So this one today makes uh, at least three that have been down there below the 100-kilometer depth there. So kind of keep an eye on that region uh, today for possible further movement. It is a uh, uh, pretty large subduction area. And, uh, of course, they had that eight-pointer a couple months ago. It's probably all aftershock activity, but there's always a chance of seeing a a much larger magnitude than what we're seeing right now with that specific activity ongoing. Uh, Puerto Rico Trench seeing a little uptick in activity as well, kind of stretching from Puerto Rico up towards the Trench region. We've seen a fairly deep subduction zone quake, 4.3 uh, at 73 kilometers right smack dab on the Puerto Rico Trench and a little further uh, to the southwest, uh, another deep earthquake, 44 kilometers for a 3.4. Uh, looking at the Northern California region off the coast of Oregon, things have just completely <clears throat> gone silent. Uh, and that could be because of the amount of trimmer activity that's kind of relieving this pressure region here. Uh, the trimmer activity has been confined mostly to the <clears throat> Northern California, Southern Oregon region. <clears throat> Goodness, so I left my window open last night and it got down to 30 degrees outside. Uh, and that's somewhat cold here for California, so it's uh, it's a little cold in the house this morning, affecting my uh, uh, affecting the voice box here. But we have seen a little bit of uptick in trimmer, uh, specifically right down here at the southern end of the Cascadia, uh, and that started immediately after the earthquakes there along the Blanco fracture zone dropped off. Uh, coincidence? I don't think so. Uh, it all plays a part in one another when we see activity up here. Uh, all this activity started um, for the most part after a couple weeks of no trimmer whatsoever and we started to see that uh, massive amount of earthquake activity off the coast of Oregon uh, and then uh, of course the trimmer activity ramped up pretty significantly kind of curious to see what it will look like today I believe it's still going to be significant once we uh, look at that map uh, so yeah nothing going on as far as off the Oregon coast goes we did see a couple uh, deeper earthquakes off the northern California coast, 18 kilometers for a 2.1. Uh, some microquakes throughout the um, Shasta area. And also some movement up here north of Mount St. Helens and around Mount Rainier. Uh, nothing specific at the summit or the uh, base areas. It's just kind of a few miles away from each volcano there. The rest of the Washington state looks pretty quiet. Intermountain West region's awfully quiet as well. It's a telltale sign of uh, not a whole lot going on out here along the North American plate, but that, uh, that could definitely change here as the uh, plates shuffle around. Looking at the Kansas region, we've seen some, a little bit of further activity um, earlier. Let's see when that was, about 11.18. So yeah, overnight, looks like early this morning up into Kansas and Oklahoma 
Pecos, Texas area getting in on uh, some some threes and a couple twos kicking up kicking up there in that uh, region. Uh, New Madrid zone, little earthquake activity last night. It looks like uh, 1.8. But I think the big picture right now is kind of focused down on this region of the of the world, as far as the uh, plate activity shuffling and adjustment at the moment. South America I did see a 5.7 in the Chile area, right at the subduction zone, 53 kilometers deep for that earthquake activity. Prior to that. We had seen a pair of really deep uh, earthquakes further north uh, and further down dip into the subduction zone with a pair of 4.8s, uh, 194 kilometers and 185 uh, for those earthquakes. Making some further adjustment here down south. Kind of been watching, uh, of course, if you remember, we had that uh, 7.5 that struck up here in the Peru region now about a week or so ago. I think it's been over a week. Let me see. It's been over a week, so last couple weeks or so, uh, we've seen uh, the activity kind of prior to that 7.5. We've seen some deeper movement stretching down along the trench area, um, kind of like an unzipping, if you will. And we had that 7.5 kick up and then nothing for a little bit uh, for a couple days. And then we've seen further deep movement down south here, kind of like what we're seeing today uh, with the deep activity in the trench. And then more shallow earthquake below that. Uh, so it's fair to say that we're going to continue to watch this region here uh, as long as we're seeing that deeper earthquake activity uh, for potential more uh, shallower, stronger earthquakes. 5.7 was uh, a lot shallower than the deeper movement we have been seeing. That one was uh, 53 kilometers still into the subduction zone, obviously, but uh, definitely uh, more towards the surface than those other two quakes. Uh, see what we got going on here in the uh, Big Island, out there in the Pacific. A little, little bit of activity southeast of the Loihi Seamount. And uh, things kind of calming down here in the Big Island. This is pretty um, inactive for the most part. Normally we see a pretty large uh, multitude of quakes here in any given day for the most part in the southeast region of Hawaii that has died down along with the west coast. And that seems to go hand in hand. Up here in the Gulf of Alaska, there's that earthquake activity uh, just outside of, let's see, 2.8, 4.6 kilometers. Got Juno way down here to the southeast. Uh, the subduction zone here, kind of a kind of a bend, right, between the North American Pacific Plate. This area does see uh, some pretty good size earthquakes, <coughs> at least to the west of there. This is the uh, subduction zone map of potential 8.5 and above they did a little article on it uh, little ranking system if you will subduction segment ranking of course the higher the number over here the darker or the, the color um, correlation uh, significant um, actually indicates the potential for an 8.5 or greater according to these guys and uh, of course accumulated stress Juan de Fuca plate high up there on the chart. Look at this down here in the South Sandwich Islands. I'm kind of surprised that uh, this is so blue and and green. Of course, we did have that 8.1, so maybe uh, 8.1 is about the maximum it can produce, but who's to say that, uh, you know, these folks aren't underestimating stuff. Uh, but other areas of the plate, off, off the uh, Juan de Fuca plate, the subduction zone, Cascadia, and of course, all areas over here. Looks like this little bend right here doesn't show too much potential in the 8.0, but that doesn't mean that uh, it's not capable of producing a, a pretty large earthquake in this region. We have seen a, I think we've seen a swarm here. Was it within the past month or so? There it is. It's still kind of showing up. This activity right here, it's a pretty significant swarm. I think I even went past this. Uh, almost daily it seemed like uh, quite a few twos and whatnot kicking up in this region uh, may get back into that uh, looks like possibly with the uh, renewed activity over the last 24 we'll have to keep an eye on that uh, but overall general activity along the west coast Hawaii there's the volcano up here around the Davidoff area I think I pronounced that correctly a lot of people say Davidoff Davidoff 
uh, showing some activity ramping up around that specific volcano kind of check that out last night looks like that's uh, continuing there with that uh, volcano let's see if I got the uh, Alaskan Volcano Observatory up of course I got raised yesterday to a yellow let's see what else we got going on see if there's been any updates the, uh, still in the yellow the seismograph station here let's look at this over the last couple hours or so looks like some activity kicking up overnight there are weekly updates swarm of earthquakes up to magnitude 4.2 4.2 in the vicinity of Davidoff may be associated with volcanic unrest of course that kind of to me that kind of looks like it is um, volcanic activity looking at this little swarm up here of course they're not showing too much here there we go got about six earthquakes or so within the region and uh, the depth here looks like it's typical of uh, volcanic activity so kind of keep an eye on that one of course uh, it's been been pretty active uh, with volcanoes this year for sure uh, everywhere except for the uh, seems like the Cascades and the uh, northern Sierra Nevada just pretty quiet when it comes to uh, volcanic activity in that region of the world we haven't had a, uh, a good volcanic eruption out here along the west coast <clears throat> in quite some time of course that will change that's a given uh, let's see Japan Trench pretty quiet again <clears throat> the activity has really died out here in the Indonesia region uh, over the last 24 hours 5.6 pretty shallow earthquake activity there all kind of looks like it's focusing down south at the moment with the uh, heightened earthquake activity Fiji did see a little uh, 4.3 pretty deep movement 588 kilometers right up against the Fiji area and some activity south of Australia around the uh, Western Indian Antarctic Ridge 4.5 down there kicking up so just kind of watching the activity today folks uh, we'll kind of focus on South America in this region the uh, earthquake activity of course has died down off the coast kind of taking down the earthquake watch uh, for now in this region just due to the calming calming conditions out here along the west coast Yellowstone <coughs> Yellowstone overnight Good Lord, uh, quiet, quiet as a mouse. Not a whole lot going on at all. Zip zero. And of course, the tremor map from last night uh, kind of showed the activity ramping up in the southern part of Oregon and the northern Cal, southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, and of course, solar weather pretty quiet. So we've got a bunch of rain coming in here to the west coast um, tonight and lasting. I believe it's lasting for at least uh, a few days or so so we're looking at some uh, pretty good rainfall totals and feet of snow some areas in the Sierra Nevadas here in California expecting uh, oh I think I've seen up to eight nine feet of snow possibly more and boy do we need it I am very thankful for uh, this winter I know the folks back east Kentucky region uh, that area of the state seen some uh, dangerously severe weather last night uh, that is not good so thoughts are going out to those folks for sure um, that's that's the type of weather that I I choose to chase when I am uh, out there chasing uh, and unfortunately uh, events like that um, are definitely uh, not good uh, when it comes to that uh, the severe weather back there but uh, Man, it's just not good. Overnight severe weather scares me, that's for sure. In the daytime, you can kind of see what's coming. Nighttime, not so much. But uh, once again, uh, thoughts going out to those folks in that area due to the uh, severe weather last night. Uh, but here in California, like I said, we got a lot of rain coming, a lot of snow. Um, and boy, do we need it. That's, I'm just very thankful for the uh, winter that we've had so far this year and hopefully it continues 
All right, folks, I am going to add back onto the channel, at least here on the Earthquake 3D Globe, the feed of not only the USGS 2.5 and above, but I'm also going to include the EMSC of, of the, uh, what do we got here? EMSC last 50, but I'm going to tone that down a little bit. So you will see earthquakes on the map that are from the EMSC and also the uh, USGS. And the reason why I do that is because a lot of times the uh, USGS is not showing the activity uh, that take, takes place. For example, La Palma, right? There's obviously a lot of earthquake activity and the USGS never shows that movement whatsoever. Um, so we are going to include that. I don't want to have a bunch of ones up here on the map because that does kind of clutter it. So we'll try to keep this at about, I do see a couple ones showing up, but we'll try to keep that at about 2.0 and above um, for the uh, EMSC model because I really, I don't like to clutter the globe up. It's about 24 hours of earthquake activity and that now includes the uh, EMSC model to show obvious earthquake activity here um, throughout the Mediterranean, up north, La Palma, Canary Islands, right? USGS never shows that, so it's, uh, it's going to stay up here on the globe. I'm just going to make sure the bells are working with the EMSC, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there, see how it works. I kind of like to switch it up once in a while, or at least add the other agency feeds on here so that we can... Uh, Keep an eye on stuff other than what the USGS is throwing at us. So we'll see how it works. Um, we'll chat you guys a little bit later, folks. Stay warm and uh, stay prepared. Peace out.